Hi, my name is Eric Hood. I'm the Product Application Specialist for Motor Graders. Today I want to talk about CAT Motor Graders, particularly focused on the 150. You know, you're used to the 140 M3 and the 140 M3 all-wheel drive. Those have transitioned into the 150. But as part of our change for nomenclature, we have eliminated the M3 or the suffix at the end. So now it's just the numeric number for the graders. Despite that change in model, the performance remains the same. What you expect for your 140 M3 or 140 M3 all-wheel drive, weight, horsepower, performance, and ability to do work is built into this 150. They remain the same weight and horsepower. Some things though that are different beyond just the model change is also the trade dress. Different decals, new style, things like that. As well as the next gen grade system if you value or prefer to have technology. This machine now is equipped with our next gen grade system which allows you an ARO system, attachment ready option, allows you a 2D system, cat grade cross slope, or CAT grade 3D if you want an integrated 3D system. Another difference in this, this machine allows you to be able to drive down your PM costs or your preventative maintenance costs by up to 20%. And what we're doing is have our next gen filters and up to a thousand hour service intervals on some of your key preventative maintenance areas such as engine oil and engine oil filter. And we'll talk more about those later. Now let's go look at where the operator spends their entire day. On this 150, it's equipped with joystick controls. With that joystick control, we want those operators to sit back and be comfortable in the cab. And they want excellent visibility. So what you see is we have an angled cab. This provides that operator excellent visibility to all the critical locations that they need on the job site. Where are the front tires? Where's the material? How's the material coming into the moldboard? Where's the toe or the leading edge of the moldboard at? How about Where's the material coming off that moldboard or off the heel, the discharge side of that moldboard? Where is that? Where's that material coming off? Whether that moldboard is under the machine or you're doing slope work and it's up on a slope, you can see that heel and where that material is being discharged. As well as also the rear tandems. You want to know where those rear tandems are in relationship to the moldboard. This angled cab provides that excellent visibility, those lines of sight to the work site that those operators expect from the front wheels to the front of the rear tandems and including the moldboard. All right, now that we're in the cab, let's talk about controls. You know, when it comes to operators, there's a preference of controls. Even though when you work the drawbar circle and moldboard, you're doing the same type of work, how you get that moldboard, drawbar, and circle into those positions are different between the two controls. In this case, the 150 we talked has the joysticks. Some of the things the operators really like about the joystick machines is the ability to sit back in the seat and be comfortable. Other thing they really like is the fact that these joysticks have 78% reduction in upper body movement. And that really just allows the operator you know, ability to have a longer shift and be more refreshed at the end of the day. You know, and these joysticks on the CAT motor grader are three axis. And when you want a control to move, or when you want to uh, implement to move, you need to move the control in that direction. So, you know, you have up, down is a forward, back. You want something to go to the left or to the right, you move the control to the left or to the right. And then if you want something to rotate, the rotation portion of it, you just rotate your wrist. And those are the three axis of this joystick. The other thing we have in the, uh, into these joysticks is we have all of the base functions of the motor grader built into it. In addition, we have the transmission. So you have forward, neutral, and reverse. You have gear up, gear down, and other functions built into these joysticks as well as with the, auto, with the articulation of this machine. When you need to go back to straight, there's a button. You simply hit the button, it straightens out your articulation of this machine. So the, one of the big things with the joystick here on this is the steering of these machines. And what we have is a joystick steer, but this is a follow steer setup. So what I mean by that is as you move the joystick, the steer wheels will follow in that position. If there's a moment, and there's a friction pack built into this, so if you have to take your hand off for a moment um, to scratch an eyebrow or do something like that, you basically take your hand off, it stays in that position, you put your hand back down, and you can take off again. 
But again, follow steer, following the steer wheels follow where that joystick is. The other thing here with the steering on this joystick system is it's speed sensitive. So as you go faster with this machine or slower, the reaction time of the front wheel steering is different. Obviously when you're doing slow and you're maneuvering around manhole covers or around obstacles, you want those steer wheels to move faster. But, as you're, but once you move at a higher speed, snow removal or roading the machine, when you have a joystick input, you don't want the steering to move quite as fast. So as you move throughout the speed range in this machine, you will see that the joystick steering response changes throughout the speed. The other thing you'll notice with these controls, they're mounted to the floor, you know, and what that provides is gives you the ability to have feel up through the machine. And with those controls mounted to the floor, it does give you some sense of what's going on with the machine and what's working with the drawbar circle and moldboard. And then to make sure you get comfortable, we have a lot of comfort settings in these seats from air suspension seats and height adjustment to dampener and how much of a ride bouncy or softer ride that you want, as well as lumbar adjustment, seat pan adjustment, and thigh adjustment. You can pull up on the front of the seat and give yourself some more thigh support, uh, kind of like you'd set yourself up in a car. There's lots of adjustments in the, of the seat. Once you get comfortable in the seat, next you turn your attention to making sure you get these controls moved in around you. And we have a lot of adjustments on these controls from an electronic pod that allows you to move and raise and lower these pods. That's an industry exclusive thing, making it easy for you to adjust throughout the day or for multiple operators or th other things that you're looking for. The other thing you'll see is we have a forward and reverse so you can get yourself comfortable with relationship to the pod to where you're at. Because really what you want as you lay this down is you want your elbow in front of your shoulder. So you kind of get that set up and kind of lay your arm down and see how far that control or that pod needs to move forward or back. The next adjustment we have here is we have an armrest and this is multi adjustable. So one control or one knob allows you to go up, down, angle. So you really can have that ability to set that up properly and keep your shoulder down and keep your elbow on the rest. And then as you get that uh, adjusted, next thing you wanna do is you can have a wrist rest adjustment. So you gotta look at how you're uh, gr um, gripping or how you're holding these joysticks. And some people have a preference of wanting some wrist rest or wrist support, and some people prefer not to. And you have that ability to adjust the setup of these control pods, really just truly allowing you to get comfortable. You know, something else that's in this seat that I didn't mention is the ability for an operator presence system. And what that operator presence system does is when you get up off the seat, it sets the parking brake and locks out the hydraulics so you don't inadvertently bump and the joystick and have a hydraulic command. So there are lots of things that are pretty neat set up. When we talk about the cab in general of this machine, you know, we really, we, our front and our doors of this machine have laminated glass. We have extremely low uh, sound levels, you know, really uh, allowing the operator to, um, you know, listen to music, listen to the machine, go through what they need to, and really do not have that a high level of noise. Also, as you look throughout, we have lots of storage area. We have an area up above in front of the cab for storage. We've got a little cubby over here for some small areas, as well as we have these optional storage bins that you see, as well as an area for a lunchbox on your right-hand side and some cleaning supplies and other things if you do need. We have that capability and excellent storage throughout this machine. So when you look at the joystick setup of these machines, I mean, obviously, again, the controls are easy to use, intuitive, you move the control in the direction you need to have an input for the machine. Um, you got that follow steer, allowing those front wheels to follow where that joystick is. We have floor mounted controls and just the ability for this operator to get comfortable, sit back 
and have a long productive day. Now let's talk about maintenance and serviceability, all done at a ground level. No matter where your machine is built, there's always a cat part available to service or maintain the machine. Let's take a look at when we get in here. Again, we talked about on the 150, we have the availability or we have the ability to drive your maintenance costs down by 20%. And a lot of that is because of the new cartridge style filter. You can see up here in these housings, you have the ability to drain these filters off, being able to spin the filter off, and you're re only replacing the cartridge internal portion of the filter. Put a new filter media in, turn, spin it back on, and then let the system bleed out your fuel filters. So with this, you have the up to 1,000 hour service intervals, if you would like to, for your fuel filters, your engine oil, and your engine oil filters, and your hydraulic oil filters. And that really just allows you less fluid, less filters, less downtime maintaining this machine. Also, you don't have the water filter separator anymore. You don't see the bowl down below. You now have a sensor in here and it tells you in the cab if there's water in the filter. And if there is, you just come out and you drain off the water and you go back to work. But as you look in here, everything is laid out really well. You have things that are color coordinated, like for instance, the engine oil fill and checkpoints are both yellow. And that just lets you know that that's what fluid you're taking a look at or needing to fill. As well as your transmission check and fill here is sitting in this area. Now, as part of this too, there is SOS sampling ports that are color coordinated. So if you see a rubber stopper or a rubber plug that's same color as these other fluid compartments, that is your SOS sampling port for taking fluid samples. But as you go through, everything's laid out. And a reminder too is with these machines and really focus on your technician, the wiring harnesses are laid out well. They are color coordinated wires. They're Deutsch style connectors, really just making a, you know, much easier for your technician or for the serviceability of this machine. As we move back here into this area, you know, we have things such as pressure check ports, those black colored caps, allowing you to easily attach if there's an issue to check pressures and do other diagnostic work as well as you have an optional service light switch that's there that you can check your engine area and check your hydraulic oil even in low light levels. You have your typically your maintenance or greasing interval chart in this area, as well as just easy access to everything. All right, as we continue on here, want to talk about a couple other things we have. We do have an exclusive fuel shutoff so if there's an emergency, you can flip this switch and kills the fuel to the machine. Again, industry exclusive type setup. And as we continue on, you'll see master disconnect here. You can easily move, change the disc and pull the key out and be able to lock that down if that's what's necessary. As well as there's an amber light in this area. I wanna talk about the tier four, truly transparent to the operator. So they just operate, they put fuel in, they put diesel exhaust fluid in, and it's truly transparent. But at the end of the day, the machine's gonna take care of itself. Shut down once it's cooled down, then you'll see this amber light stay on. We recommend you don't shut off the master disconnect until after the amber light goes off, because that means the DEF system is purging the system, pulling all that diesel exhaust fluid or DEF back into the tank preparing and getting the machine ready for the next morning. That is truly transparent to the operator and they're able to just continue to operate, not worry. There might be a little amber light that comes on on the dash that indicates that the machine is regenning. All they need to do is keep operating the machine and it'll take care of it. Another thing we've done is when you go to fill the diesel exhaust fluid on this machine, if you have the key on and the master disconnect on and you start to fill the diesel exhaust fluid tank or the DEF tank, when you get to about 90% full, the horn will honk or blow, indicating you're almost full, and so you don't overfill that diesel exhaust fluid um, and run it down the tank. And then as we continue on back, we have great access to the cooling system. You can access one side of the coolers here. 
you have a little door that gets you in between the coolers here. And then we also have an industry exclusive rear swing out door in the back, no tools. Just press the latch and open it all the way up to 90, giving you unparalleled access to the cooling system on this machine. And if you're in a high debris application, we have an optional reversing fan that just helps prolong the maintenance needed on those coolers by allowing you to set how frequently that fan reverses or purges cleaning off those coolers. You can set those from 20 minutes, every 20 minutes, up to 240 minutes, depending upon your debris and your application. When it comes to safety on the 150, we have things built in throughout. We have an operator presence system. That's a switch in the seat. When the operator gets up off the seat, it locks the parking brake and disables the hydraulics. Also, when we're steering and if there's an issue, we have a standard secondary steering system. So when a machine doesn't see engine power, it kicks in the secondary steering system, giving you the ability to steer the machine and safely get the machine stopped. Service brakes. We have brake discs at each one of the wheels helping to stop that machine. And if there happens to be an issue, we also have a dual accumulator system to support or back up that braking system. And then also you want to check the health of those brakes. You can easily do it. There are wear indicators built into this machine that allow you to check the health of those brakes uh, as a, on an as needed basis. Also, you always want to see what's going on behind this machine. We have a standard rear camera with a dedicated screen in the cab above the mirror that is always on. Whether that machine's moving forward or moving backwards, you always have that camera on and know what's right behind that machine. Ground level fuel shut off. If there's an emergency and we need to shut that machine off from the ground, you can easily walk over, flip that switch, and it shuts the machine down in case of emergency. And then last thing, if you have people and you're working where, around the public on roads in low light situations, such as you know roading back to the shop or roading back onto the job site or snow removal, we have fold down rear lights. You can fold those lights down, helps people in the cars and general public that are around that machine know how wide the machine is, know that they're coming up on the machine, again, in those low light situations. So as you look throughout this machine, we have safety built in everywhere. When we get to the drawbar circle and mold board, also known as the DCM, there's lots of serviceability available here. Each of these connection points as you look throughout this drawbar circle and mold board has serviceability built in. You know, whether there's shims that can be replaced or there's sacrificial pieces of, of wear inserts that can be easily replaced. You know, so start with the draft ball in the front. That draft ball is actually removable. You can unbolt it, remove the draft ball, install a new one, take that area back to factory tight. As soon as you come back to this area, every single one of these connection points, cylinder connection points, has shims and wear insert cups. So that if you wear, or as that wears down, you can take it back to factory tight. The whole idea is, no matter the age of the machine, you always can go back to where it started factory tight. Also, you know, between the serviceability, you know, you have the pinion, which is driven by the shaft through the gearbox here. That has the shaft and the pinion gear are separated. So if you have an issue, you can just change out quickly the pinion gear and you're back to business without a problem. You know, then you get back, again, we talked about shims and wear inserts or this link bar. This link bar also has bushings in the link bar. So what happens if you happen to wallow out a hole or you use one link bar hole more than the other, if you do need and there's some movement in there, you can actually press out the bushing and pound in a new one. Other things here, we've made it easy with this top adjust. We got an industry exclusive setup here, really keeping this moldboard, draw bar moldboard and circle tight. We have adjustments. You can get shims out of your toolbox, 30 millimeter wrench. You can pull six caps off. You can add more shims to keep this connection between 
this area tight so it's predictable, precise response as you move, as the operator moves the moldboard up and down. In addition to making it easy to adjust from the top, we also have the ability to adjust the slide rail inserts here. You have vertical and horizontal adjustments of the slide rail inserts so you can help to keep tight on that moldboard slide rail. And once you wear out the material in there, you can pull a couple bolts off the side, pull those inserts out, put in new inserts, and again, you're back to tight. And we have a standard circle drive slip clutch that if the moldboard contacts an immovable object, it allows the moldboard to give, protecting the machine and the obstacle. As well as for maintenance, if you go underneath on that pinion gear, we have a circle saver as an option. And what that does is allows that pinion to be in grease with the remote line to the top, just helping keep that pinion serviced because we recommend grease on that pinion. And another thing we have, industry exclusive, we have the ability to adjust the bias or the preference for an operator to the left or to the right with the moldboard. You have these anchor points that you can easily take the bolts out and move 12 inches to the left or 12 inches to the right to give you that preference that you prefer. So you have precision, whether, no matter what type of work you're doing, snow removal, road maintenance, or putting down the last passes prior to putting down a new road. You can always expect predictable, precise response because you're keeping this drawbar circle and moldboard with all of these adjustments and or serviceable areas. When it comes to drive systems on CAT Motor Grader, we have the rear tandem drive or an all-wheel drive. Regardless of what drive system is chosen, there's a lot of value in either one. When it comes to the all-wheel drive system, you know, you have your front wheels pulling. And the value you have with an all-wheel drive is it gives you increased tractive effort. You know, you have the, and with the all-wheel drive, you have the ability to set your aggression. So based on your application and need, you can actually slow down or speed up the front tires in relationship to the rear tandems to help keep you on a slope, help pull the machine through ditching, or you can have the rear tires at the, excuse me, the front tires the same as the rear tires in speed. Also with our system here, we have what's called steering compensation. As you go into a turn, you have full power with the all-wheel drive system on, but it also knows and sees that you have a steering input it speeds up your outside wheel, slows down your inside wheel, both in relationship to the rear tandems to allow you a 20% faster turn with the all-wheel drive system on. Other thing here is you do have a creep mode. If you're doing that final pass and you don't want your rear tandem scuffing, you can actually engage the front wheels only and then adjust zero to five miles an hour just having the front wheels pull you along to be able to make those fast last passes and not have your tandem scuff the work that you're putting down. As well as, when we engage the all-wheel drive system on our machines, we bump our horsepower up for a constant net power because when we engage those all-wheel drive pumps, there's more demand on the engine. So we bump those, the horsepower up to take care of those additional loads on the engine. If you're doing and looking at a non-all-wheel drive machine though, you know, and you'll be able to tell because the tire will be backwards and it'll be free spinning. But there's a lot of value there because we have a live spindle design. And what that means is we put our larger bearing on the outside in the middle of the uh, wheel because of all of the loads, you know, wheel lean, working slopes, doing other things like that, put a lot of load on the outside the tire. So we put our larger bearing there. As well as making it easier to maintain this front axle hub it's an oil-filled assembly, and you have 2,000 hour service intervals. So when you do need to service it, you just move the machine in the position, you drain the oil out, and you fill with new oil. Easy to do and easy to maintain. And as you look at the front axles on all cat graders, whether it's an all-wheel drive machine or a non-all-wheel drive machine, each of these connection points are hardened connection points. So each one of these bolts have hardened for long life and durability throughout the life of the machine.
When it comes to technology on a cat grader, we have things to assist an operator. Things such as auto articulation that allows the operator to have the rear of the machine follow the front wheels, easily activated, making it easy for the operator. We also have stable blade. Certain applications, speeds, and other variables can cause a motor grader bounce. The stable grade system, when activated, helps to prevent that bounce by sensing bounce prior to the operator. And then we have advanced control joysticks. Interacting with a cat grade system or an auxiliary system, those advanced control joysticks allow you to keep your hands on the joysticks for more functions. When it comes to other technologies, grade or blade technologies, we have a real simple, easy to use uh, digital blade slope meter. That's a easy to use digital readout of the blade slope. Or you can start to build it into scalable technologies. And the building block for that is CAT grade ARO, attachment ready option. That gives you all the features you need to plug and play a 2D or 3D type system. You can also go to a CAT grade cross slope. That's a 2D system that allows the operator to select a slope and be able to set one side of the blade or mold board in automatic and then control the other side manually and the automatic side follows. You can also use that cat grade cross slope as a rolling survey tool so you have real time feed out, actual feed out or readout of your blade slope and your main fall or your grade of your machine. And then the last thing, if you have more complex designs, 3D type designs, we also have CAT grade 3D. That's an integrated 3D GNSS system with a design plan that allows you full utilization of the grader in any position you want. And then when you need to turn the grade system on, that grade system is available, but still gives you full functionality and utilization of the grader. And with CAT grade 3D, you get standard defense that helps protect the machine, keeping the moldboard out of the tires or the ladder, as well as preventing the drawbar from contacting the link bar.